Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Am I the Butthole Mixed with Relationships 2. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And if you do love a podcast, we got that as well. Links all down in the description. And with that being said, let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Resident Put. 3606 who says am i the arsehole for letting my dad live the way he wants and of course comes with an update as well i 40 male have a father 62 male that likes to live a very simple and secluded life after my mum had an affair and divorced him to run away with a younger man he's been very closed off when we were a year into the pandemic he asked me if he could build a sub building on the back of my property and live in it I bought the property my grandparents owned and there are six acres with some trees. You can't even see where my dad built his little cabin. It's really just a modified Home Depot shed he's made into his own little house. He's got power via a line run from my house but also keeps a generator for when he needs it. And his little building only has the basic necessities. And above all, it's quiet. He spends his spare time in there reading or watching DVDs when he's not out working. He drives trucks for a living and my mum took a chunk of his retirement when they divorced. So he's decided to live a minimalist life in a quiet place. He has a wood stove he uses for heat, keeps food cold in a small fridge, cooks everything with either a microwave or propane, built his own composting toilet and gets his water from a hose line that comes directly from our well. He's got a cell phone that works fine down there as well, so he's not completely off the grid. I leave him alone 90% of the time because it's that peace that he treasures now. Other members of my family, however, don't like the way he's living and they're calling me an enabler, but he's happy the way he is living now. My sister and aunt both are pressuring me to get him to come back to civilization, but he's literally just deep in my backyard. My kids don't even bother him without permission. There's literally no drama between us. He comes over for dinner regularly and loves spending time with his grandchildren. But when he's alone in that cabin, that's exactly how he wants it to stay. So we don't bother him there. But my sister, aunt and a few others kept pressuring dad to move in with one of them or get himself an apartment. They are all city people and they refer to this way of life as unclean. But he keeps himself in his home very clean and he does his laundry regularly. My relatives can't seem to come up with a valid excuse as to why they want him out of his cabin. But they won't let it go either. I've refused to be in the middle over this and they are saying what I'm doing is slowly hurting him, but he seems healthier than ever. So I don't believe them for a second, but the pressure is getting to me because they keep saying that I'm just waiting for him to die alone in there. Now to me in this one, he's an adult, you know, as long as he's sound, healthy, and this is truly the lifestyle he wants, then then who's to say anything about it? It sounds peaceful and quite nice in some ways to me. I'm a city boy myself, so I probably wouldn't last that long (laughs) doing anything like that. But I do think that lifestyle does sound quite amazing to me. I have thought about it myself, like about just getting out there and just being separate from the wide world and just living out somewhere completely separate where you can just do your own thing in peace and quiet. I think it sounds wonderful. And like I said, as long as your father doesn't have any issues or anything like that, and this is the life he truly wants, then who is to say anything about it? absolutely not the arsehole but we're going to start off with plant king who says not the arsehole he's a grown adult and can do what he wants he seems happy he visits you it's not like he's completely cut off either everything is taken care of they can shove off wolf and bro says not the arsehole your dad's happy and healthy and they can butt out a firm leave it alone from both you and your dad should in theory get them to back off and if it doesn't at least for you you can just nope out of any conversation where they bring it up They'll eventually get the hint, hopefully. co auntie says not the arsehole. This sounds like my dream retirement, lol. Just leave me in peace to read, watch things, and game. Sounds like your dad is healing and thriving, to be honest. An enabler would only be someone enabling an addict or abuser, etc. This is not a serious situation like either of those. It doesn't sound like you are enabling his addiction and he is not hurting himself or anyone else. If your family is so concerned, they could... Ask local law enforcement or adult protective services to do a welfare check on him, I'm sure. Maybe hearing from someone else in a position of authority would quiet their fears. Otherwise, tell them to go pound sand. 
OP replies saying, my sister did try to call in a welfare check by police. They found him barbecuing steak and listening to Pat Benata. I don't know who that is. Needless to say, he was fine. But sister and aunt still think otherwise. I just did a quick Google. I do know who that is now. <laughs> I've heard a few of the songs. <laughs> Rushu Holmes says, not the arsehole. I'm sure something was off with your dad. Dementia, hoarding, drugs. You wouldn't have him out in his cabin. I live rural. I know a few people who live like this. They're fine. They are done with the material life. I get it. Your sister and aunt can come see that he's fine. And one more from Nerdy Swamp Witch who says, not the arsehole. Here's your script. Family. Dad is an adult who has all his mental faculties. He has access to everything he needs to live a safe, hygienic lifestyle in his cabin. He's not living in filth. He takes care of himself and the property, regularly joins us for dinner and to see the grandkids, and he is happy. If he shows signs of mental or physical deterioration, I would be the first to intervene, but for now, we're going to let Dad be an adult making adult choices. If you keep trying to bring up this conversation again, we will force us to go no contact or no contact with you. And I'll be sad about it, so let's not do that. And just sitting back and reflecting on these comments in the story itself before we get to the update. I think, you know, and I'm trying to put myself in the, the other family's shoes and just, it seems like they're away from the situation. Obviously, OP's got a, OP can see his dad and he can see what's going on a little bit more in depth than what's going on from the outside, possibly. Obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of this story, but I think if it was my dad and he just decided that one day he was going to go and like move into, you know, a, a, a converted shed, if you like initially the concern would be there so i do get that side of things as well i think i would be concerned if there is bigger things going on but if it, if it is such a leap obviously i don't know the ins and outs again but it feels like it's a bit of a leap in lifestyles from what dad was used to in this so i think there is a little bit of right to be concerned in some forms but then again i did read a comment on there as well that they have visited dad and they've tried to tell him several times so you know, I'm still on OP side with this, not the arsehole at all. But just from the point of like, if it was my dad, I think there would be some small concerns there. But after some discussion, I think it could be cleared up pretty easily. So the update goes on to say, a lot has happened in just the last few hours. I've shown this post to my dad and also to my aunt and sister. Let's just say things didn't go well. A lot of stuff came out that I didn't expect to hear. To start off, Reading your comments finally gave my dad the motivation to put his foot down against my sister and aunt. And the fact that literally no one saw things from my aunt and sister's point of view in the comments hit them hard when they looked through this post. They finally admitted to believing I'm keeping dad from them. They stood by the fact that they hate country life and wanted my dad to come back to the city. He refused. There was a huge argument in which my dad said that he wouldn't stand for all the underhanded crap that my aunt and sister had been doing like calling in wellness checks with the local police on him. In an argument between my dad and I against my sister and aunt, it came out that my sister's husband had filed for divorce some time ago because my sister had cheated a lot. What's more, my aunt was aware of it and hid it from everyone. My sister is basically losing everything as my brother-in-law has been gathering evidence for years and has filed for majority custody in the divorce. I've spoken with him to get the full details and... What he has on my sister is very bad. He hired a private investigator and found out way more than he expected he would. He's shown me some of the evidence he has and who my sister has cheated with. And I'm not going into further detail about it here, but let's just say that it'd be damning in court. Enough so that if he uses what he knows, it'd end my sister's career in a heartbeat. So basically, has no choice but to agree to his terms. My sister felt backed into a corner and doubled down on trying to get my dad to move closer to her so he could basically be her counterweight. And finding all this out hit my dad very hard. He never thought my sister could do something like that or that his own sister would cover it up. He said that for the time being, neither of them are welcome in his life and he's retreated back to his cabin with a bottle of honey whiskey and a clear do not disturb order. Considering what my mother had done, the fact that my sister is just like her has really done my dad no favors. He was in a pretty bad way after the divorce and it took him months to recover. Now he's there all over again. This started out as just a post to ask if I was in the wrong, but it caused things to explode far beyond that. My sister and aunt are no longer allowed round me or my family, possibly indefinitely. Not after what we found out. They actually tried to defend their reasoning to me, but I told them there was no defense at all for what they'd done. 
and they'd be lucky if their lives aren't ruined further. I'll also add this detail in advance in case any more questions about my aunt and her keeping what my sister did a secret. Her own marriage ended 15 years ago because of infidelity and my dad barely forgave her. Her own kids are about a decade younger than me and they hardly speak to her. I imagine they may cut her off completely if they find out what she did. My brother-in-law is still very welcome in the family and we are making plans for him to bring my nibblings out for a visit. Of course, without my sister. This has all taken a very unexpected turn, but my wife is comforting me and telling me I've done everything right. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Yummy Forehead, who says, Am I the asshole for calling my brother a shitty dad and a shittier husband? I, 16 male, have an older brother, 26 male, who recently had his first son a month ago. His wife, 26 female, never wanted a kid, but my brother convinced her to have one. This was the first time I visited since the baby was born, since we live states away. The place was pretty dirty, but I shrugged it off thinking that they're new parents and have their hands full. Then I seen his wife, who looked like she hasn't showered since her delivery, slept in a week or anything except take care of the baby. Compared to my brother, who was clean, well-kept and rested, and she was a train wreck. While we were there for four hours, I really saw how much he contributed. Every time the baby would cry, my brother would hand him off to my mum or his wife. He ran out of the nursery yelling for someone else to change the baby's diaper, and turns out it was a small turd. Not even a blowout. <laughs> Other examples of his negligence include insisting we leave the baby home alone while we went out for dinner, refusing to bathe him and yelling at the baby to just go to sleep. My parents had seen enough in person and sat everyone down, me included. We told him he needs to grow up and help out, but he just kept making excuses like how he's tired from work. For the record, he works six to seven hours a day, Monday through Friday, sometimes a half a day on Saturdays. His logic was that because he works, he can avoid his duties as a father. He is not the breadwinner, by the way. The mother works as well, willingly, at home. He eventually was mad that we wanted him to be a dad and he just said, she's a woman, I'm a man, I don't take care of him other than sports and teaching him to be a man. I snapped and started yelling how he's a shitty dad for neglecting the child he pressured his wife to have. I called him a lousy dad and how sad it is that he makes everyone do duties for him. I called him a deadbeat, adding how he shouldn't have had a kid if he didn't want to help out. I said I was sorry his wife married him because he was such a shitty husband and how much better she can do and added how I wouldn't be surprised if they were divorced by the time he was 30. Everyone was silent. My parents told me to wait outside then later told me to apologize because it was rude and unnecessary. I refused but I heard him crying. I don't know if I took it too far, but I think he needs a reality check so that kid grows up with him present. We tried over the phone before and only were being nice, but that didn't work. I need to know Reddit. Am I the arsehole? Edit. Hello, lots of comments and messages asking if sister-in-law is okay. Thank you for your concern. It makes me think humanity isn't doomed yet. She's okay. She got the rest she needed while we were there and, and cleaned up herself. She said she would probably start making my brother do baby things so she could take care of herself. Now, of course, you're going to not be the arsehole in this situation. Like you said, it's a reality check. He sounded like he needed to hear it. It sounds like you've gone down this nice route before, which hasn't helped. And you saw the effects of his negligence in his own home. She's a woman. I'm a man. I don't take care of him other than sports and teaching him to be a man. Yeah, come on now. Fuck that shit. The attitude needs to be changed very bloody quickly. Let's check out some comments to see what they say. Starting with Rural Bedbug who says, Wow, I can barely begin to dissect this whole situation. Your brother pressures his wife to have a baby and does absolutely nothing to help. He works regular hours and she is a full-time mum plus working from home, but he is too tired to give her any help. So the house is a mess and she is exhausted and doesn't even have time for a shower. He won't feed, change, soothe or bathe his child and what? Leave a month old infant home alone. I hope no one agreed with that. Good on you for calling out your brother. Too bad your parents thought you were rude. 
Most posters here frown on so-called rude awakenings or telling it like it is or being brutally honest because to be honest, people just use those excuses to be harsh and, and assholeish. But in this case, it was appropriate and necessary. Your brother needed a swift kick, not the arsehole and your uh, borderline assholes, for letting their 16 year old say what they should have said. Quotes, she's a woman, I'm a man. I don't take care of him other than sports and teaching him to be a man. It goes on to say, shudder, that poor kid. What is your brother teaching anyone about being a man and how does he expect his lessons to turn out? His 16 year old brother is a better man than he is and had to teach an adult about being a husband and father. Hope you can be a part of your new nephew's life, even from a distance because you're going to need to be the positive male figure for him. Winsome Bernie says not the asshole. If facts hurt then maybe he should change his behavior. Your parents are completely out of line to ask you to apologize and, and he needs to cry. Imagine how much his poor wife has felt like crying. She's grown and delivered a human being and the person who was supposed to be her adult partner has taken a mental trip to 1949. Way to be a good brother-in-law. Get yourself a treat. And one more from Jolly Tooth7274 who says not the asshole and don't apologize. You were rude, yes, but he is being horrible to his family. I would dare say borderline abusive. His wife looking like she hasn't showered in a month what he obviously has and him yelling at a one month old baby are red flags for me. Your parents tried the gentle approach but it wasn't working. If his 16 year old brother giving him a fatherhood lesson doesn't make this man wake up then nothing will. Don't apologize. Now what do you guys make of this situation? It can only be a not the arsehole right? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's check out another story. And this next story comes from Lion Friend who says, Am I the arsehole for wearing the same color as the bride as a wedding harpist and not changing? So I, female 18, was asked to play the harp at a friend of my father's wedding. Normally I would ask for payment beforehand, but since it was a family friend, they asked if they could just pay me at the reception and I told them yes. The dates worked out for me and it was set in the church about one hour from my house. I showed the dress I planned to wear to the bride when we went over the music she wanted and at the rehearsal but only on a hanger. It looked like it would be ugly on a hanger as it's just navy blue with long sleeves and floor length, but it's surprisingly pretty. I got to the venue about four hours early so my harp would have time to climb at the room. When I got there, the bride's mother came to give me my corsage and when she saw me, she demanded I change my dress. I laughed because I've known her for years and then realized she wasn't joking. I asked what was wrong with it and she said that the bride went with a non-traditional dress that was also navy blue. I panicked a little because this is her wedding and I felt really bad, but she and her groom had approved it twice. I told her mother and she asked if I had any other color I could change into. I don't bring extra dresses unless my dress somehow doesn't get approved beforehand, so I didn't. She then told me to go to the bridal shop 20 minutes away and buy a new dress. I refused because those dresses would cost about what I was getting paid for this wedding and I told her I couldn't afford it. I felt bad, but she begrudgingly walked away. The actual wedding went smoothly and after everyone else had left the church and congratulated the bride, I stopped to talk to her. I explained what the mother-in-law said and she said it was fine and that they weren't thinking when they approved my dress. At the reception, when I talked to the mother-in-law about payment, she refused to pay me. I didn't want to cause a scene but the bride came over and heard us talking. This time, she was also upset with me and also refused to pay me. I didn't know what to do as my parents were busy and couldn't attend this wedding. I didn't have anyone there to back me up. A lot of people assume harpists come from a lot of money because of how expensive harps are. But I've been renting a harp since fourth grade and when my teacher passed, we bought it for an amazing deal. I also charge a lot less than most musicians would. But I have a college payment due in a few days and I can't afford it. I got my parents involved when I got home and my dad talked to his friend, the father of the groom, who was there when they approved the dress and he got the payment to me. I still feel really bad, but I don't think there was anything I could have done. Should I have just sucked it up and bought a new dress? Am I the arsehole? Now to me, it just feels like that they were just trying to get this as a, like a freebie from you. They, they saw the opportunity there and they thought, oh, maybe we can get this for free now. They're absolutely not the arsehole at all. They approved it. That's on them. The bride even said so. If they weren't thinking at the time, that's a, their problem. That's not a you issue. And it almost brings me back to the story of the photog the wedding photographer. If, do you remember that one where, where they didn't feed her or anything like that? And in the end, the photographer deleted the photos right in front of them. 
And I know it's way too late now, but it would have been absolutely amazing when that mother-in-law went up to OP and gave them the grief and said, Ryan, I'll take my harp and I'll get out of here, shall I? And you'll have no music for your wedding. The absolute bloody cheeky so-and-sos. But creepy says, girl, no, they just wanted to stiff you. You did everything you were supposed to. In future, invoice clients and keep electronic records in case things escalate in ways you cannot mitigate via fatherly intervention. Not the arsehole. Bring in the clown says, not the arsehole. In future, get prepayment for your services because this will not be the first shakedown you encounter by people trying to get your talent without payment. Honestly, if bride chooses a non-traditional color aside from white and ivory, chances are that someone will be wearing that color of their dress. That's not anyone else's problem aside from the bride if it's not explicitly been discussed with the guests. Shodwill says, not the arsehole. I'm going to say this may have been set up in advance so they wouldn't have to pay you. They may have thought you were a friend of the family and you should have done it for free. After all, the bride was cool until it came time to pay. Lesson learned for you. Get at least half a deposit for everyone. Prestigious Pick says, not the arsehole. You actually went above and beyond by showing the bride and groom your dress ahead of time. Unless that was part of the agreement for your heart playing. It wasn't necessary. On top of that, they said your dress was fine. They didn't get to then demand that you wear something different on the day of the event without paying for the new dress. They also don't get to refuse to pay you for your services just because they didn't like the dress that they told you was fine to wear. Great job getting the parents involved to make sure you got paid. And one more from Yiho or Miho who says not the asshole at all. It was unreasonable to ask at last minute and the bride is a little wacky for changing her mind between the ceremony and reception. The failure to notify you when she chooses a dress after approving yours was not your problem. P.S. Thanks for the story. I learned that harps have to get acclimated to a room. I never knew that and find it fascinating. Does the room change affect the strings or the frame of the harp? And OP replies saying, any heat, cold or humidity difference can affect the tuning of the harp. And so can transportation. So if you tune a harp as soon as you get to the venue, they'll probably be out of tune within the hour. And you can risk breaking the shorter strings at the top. Wow, I found that pretty fascinating when OP was talking about that as well. That's crazy. I love a learning day. But what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, would love to hear them if you have a moment of your time. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support and time towards the channel always means the absolute world. And as always, don't forget we have a podcast as well. If you prefer a different format to listen to, Spotify, Apple Cars, Deezer, whatever. There's a whole bunch of podcasts that gets distributed to. And if you don't see the one that you want, let me know. And I will try to get it sorted out there as well. We also have our own website now, mark-narrations.com, where it's got all the podcasts on there as well. And you can subscribe to your favorite one. It's a work in progress, by the way. But a huge thank you for being here. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day, wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon, let's go, see the sun shining from the windows, okay, I know that today